the ideal student in an abstract sense is someone who is eager to learn and who is willing to put in the work. My ideal student would be someone who has those qualities and is really interested in people, is really interested in psychology and people issues and how do we understand people and the way they think and the way they behave. So that, that would be my ideal student. When I was a student, I was really impatient. I would sit in lectures and I would just roll my eyes whenever the professor would have a list of bullet points and would read every single bullet point. I was like, I can read faster than you can talk. So this, I think, I think this attitude is what makes me a good teacher <laughs> because I, I want to be engaging. I remember what it was like to sit in a classroom and just be bored out of your mind and think, why am I here? So I, and plus, I think because I, I kind of learned my teaching skills at BCG teaching consultants, and consultants are one of the most demanding audiences because they're impatient, they don't have time. They're taking time away from their work to sit in this classroom with you. So you need to not only be engaging, but you need to be able to tell them something that's useful, that they can use. And this is what I do with my students here, is I'm not gonna teach it to them unless I think they can use it, unless I think it's actually useful information that can be applied in some way. The attitude I see in some teachers is this is the way we do things. Like this is, this is what the students should get. As opposed to putting yourself in the shoes of the student and thinking, wait, you know, okay, maybe 20 years ago, that's what the students should get. But now, look at the world, look at the way it's changed. What do students really need? What is, what is the type of information, the knowledge that they really need to succeed in the world? That's, I would love it if more people thought that way. What we want to do is we want to teach our students how to think. And so what I, what I always explain when I say what's the difference between a master's in management and an MBA is that, um, that quote where um, if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. If you teach a man to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. So it's this idea that we're not giving you a fish. We're not giving you the answers. And it really frustrates me. We get this more and more, students saying, can you just tell me what the answer is supposed to be? It's like, well, no, <laughs> no, of course we can't. What we're teaching you is how to fish. And yes, it can be difficult, it can be boring sometimes, it can be really hard work. But ultimately, in the end, we're teaching you a skill that will last you for a lifetime. So we're teaching you the fundamental theories and how to critically analyze those theories. And that's something that you should be able to use throughout your life. One of the things that I've done recently in a course that I'm running is um, we wanted students to start blogging. And this is because it's, it's a human resources management course. And one of the things we found was that these students are very young. A lot of them have no work experience or minimal work experience. And they don't really understand. Human resources issues are very difficult to understand if you haven't worked full time. So last year we had a couple students who actually on their own started a website where they brought in lots of um, articles about human resources issues from various sources. And this was really interesting and students really loved it. And off the back of that, we started thinking, well, how can we get students to really think about these issues and talk about these issues? So now on the Moodle page for this course, we, um, we set up a blog with the help of LTI. We set up um, blogs so that students can actually communicate with each other about these issues, and then we can also get involved in the conversation. We can see what they're saying. Um, and it's, it's worked really well. I love the fact that LSE tries to connect with the outside world and tries to make an impact with their research. I have executive students who write dissertations on topics that are really relevant and really important because they're working full time, so they, they know what the issues are. And then they ask me, what can I do with my dissertation now that it's done? And I say, well, publish it on an LSE blog because we have these avenues for students to actually let people know about what they've done, and, and for academics as well, but just to, to reach out and make an impact with our ideas and our research.